Greetings students and welcome back to another video on tensors. In this short lesson I'm going to go over some topics in the linear algebra of tensors. I'll start the video by talking about linear transformations. Suppose I had a vector x in a coordinate system c that looked like this. If my coordinate system c was transformed to another coordinate system c prime, and if this transformation was performed by a linear transformation, then how would the vector x appear in the new coordinate system? Well, this is how it would appear in C prime as the vector x prime, which equals a matrix L times the original vector x in the coordinate system C. The matrix L is called the transformation matrix, and in general we can use a matrix to represent linear transformations. Now keep in mind that linear transformations cover a fairly small subset of transformations, including scaling the axes and rotating the axes. They're mainly transformations that map a line in the C coordinate system to another line in the C prime coordinate system. But what about more general transformations? Well, instead of constant matrices, general transformations can be expressed as functions. So again, if I have my vector x in the d coordinate system, and if I transform the d coordinate system to a d prime coordinate system with a general transformation, then the image vector x prime, the vector you get after transforming x, is given by the following expression, where t is the function that defines the general transformation. You can also write this equation in terms of the components of x prime given by x prime i, in which case you would get the following, where x prime i is in general a function ti of all the components of the original vector x. There's some important definitions involving general transformations that I'd like to go over. The first is the definition of a bijective transformation, which is basically a one-to-one -one transformation, Every x corresponds to a unique x prime, and every x prime corresponds to a unique x. The image x prime of a bijective transformation T represents a set of admissible coordinates for x, and the collection of all these admissible coordinates, the aggregate of these admissible coordinates, comprises a coordinate system. Now if T is linear, the x prime i coordinate system is called an affine coordinate system. In addition, if t is a nonlinear transformation, then the x prime i coordinate system is also called a set of curvy linear coordinates. Examples would include polar coordinates, cylindrical coordinates, and spherical coordinates. Now I'm going to end this video by briefly going over the chain rule for partial derivatives. I won't be deriving the chain rule, I'll just show what it looks like in Einstein notation. Suppose that w is a function of n variables u, where the variable u i is itself a function of m variables x, i varies from 1 to n. If this is the case, then the partial derivative of w with respect to x j, where j is an index between 1 and m, is given by the following. We can actually shorten this expression using the rules of Einstein notation. The index i, which varies from 1 to n, is being summed over, so we can write the partial of w with respect to xj as the partial of f with respect to ui times the partial of ui with respect to xj, where i is the repeated index, the dummy index that's being summed over. Anyway, that should do it for this lecture and for the first part in my series on tensor calculus. After this video, we're going to get deep into the mathematics and terminology of tensor calculus by talking about coordinate transformations and contravariant and covariant tensors. I'd like to thank the following patrons for supporting me at the $5 level or higher. I've linked my Patreon account in the description for you to check out. And that's it. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the faculty of Khan signing out.